All right, YouTube. This is an interesting story. That's a true story, obviously, um, about some dates I went on with a girl that used to be homeless. So, I've been uh, going on a lot of random dates that are from online dating, right? So Tinder, Facebook dating, or OkCupid is typically what I use. So because I'm single now, I had a relationship, uh, first of all, for a background. I had a relationship from July to September. Uh, and before that, uh, I had a relationship um, in 2019 uh, that ended um, February 2019, uh, but it lasted about two years. So what I did in between those two relationships and also after my recent relationship is trying to get done a lot of interesting kind of experiences, taking advantage of this time that I am single. Uh, because I don't know if the next relationship I'll, I'll have will be my last relationship in the sense that it may be a permanent one that'll lead to marriage, blah, 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 you know? So anyways, one experience I wanted to have was maybe, uh, or that came up was this girl that I was talking to on Facebook dating happened to be homeless at different points. So I thought it would be an interesting experience to be able to go on a date with someone who happens to be homeless at a different part of their life. So this girl is 20. She turned 20 in December. I'm 24. So this girl is from a town uh, that's like, or she now currently lives in a town that's 45 minutes northwest of me. And I live about 20 minutes outside of Boston, 20 minutes west of Boston. So this girl, I was talking to her starting, I think, November. Um, but I didn't meet her until January. And it was interesting. So she, first of all, when we were talking, she would get quite angry at different points if I didn't answer uh, too quick. Um, or she would get really angry um, about if uh, considering the fact that I didn't plan a plan with her sooner than later and also in ways that were exactly what she wanted. So we eventually ended up finally meeting in January, but uh, she, during most of that first point though of me talking to her, she was homeless. She was homeless, um, and then she was sent to a psychiatric hospital because she felt suicidal, um, and then her parents, not her real biological parents, but the ones who adopted her, or not adopted her, uh, I forget what it's called, um, the ones who uh, are caretakers uh, for her, um, I don't know why I'm blanking out right now on what that's called, but they took her in uh, after that hospitalization because they felt bad, also considering her birthday uh, was coming up like a week after she got hospitalized. Um, so anyways, we finally decided to meet um, when she um like uh, towards the beginning of january right so she lived in different places throughout her life within massachusetts and i found out like when we were hanging out that she is owned by the state so the benefit for that is she can get like um she used to be able to get like certain free or cheap housing i forget what it was i think cheap that's what it is, a uh, discount. Uh, and, but it would be like special kind of housing that she would have to apply for and this and that. Uh, 
And also, she gets her college paid. Um, so I found out, which I could tell, I'm really good at sensing what sort of disorders people uh, could have. Um, and I could sense that she had borderline personality disorder, and I guessed it correctly. And no offense to people with borderline personality disorder, but they can be quite, quite, quite a handful. Uh, I believe they could be significantly more of a handful than bipolar people. Bipolar people, there's a wide range. Uh, there's people that have bipolar that could have their moments that they're more intense uh, or less intense than there's ones that can be like harmless in almost every regard and peaceful like peaceful in the sense they won't uh harm you in any way and and quite functional people it's like it's a it's a wide spectrum kind of like autism versus borderline personality disorder uh for what i've experienced of every borderline personality disorder person i've met uh they've been quite a handful in a lot of ways but i'm able to connect with them uh quite well um in a lot of regards um and so what happened was i picked her up she doesn't drive she doesn't have a car uh i picked her up and we were gonna go to applebee's uh a town away from her so i haven't been to applebee's for years because all the applebee's around me have closed so I thought it was pretty neat. At the time, she was working at a different Applebee's that was in her town. That's why we didn't go in the one that is at her town. So we went to Applebee's. We ate there. It was good. We got a discount because she uh, she is an employee at that other Applebee's. Um, and I was the one who paid because I was doing that because it, for a birthday gift, you know, uh, since she was a birthday girl about a month before. And yeah, it was a good time. We were we connected well and everything. Uh, nice girl. Uh, and another interesting uh, coincidence is I found out that she actually was uh, was friends with my ex's younger sister, my recent ex's younger sister, because they both happened to go to the same uh, vocational or charter school. I always get them mixed up. Uh, not mixed up, but me and like in this situation, I forget which one uh, my ex and ex's little sister went to if it was a vocational or charter school. I think it might have been charter school. But yeah, so that was a very interesting connection. Um, and also, uh, yeah, so after we decided to fuck when we were in the car, right? Uh, so we fucked in my car, uh, in that parking lot, but it was like a little further. It was like a giant plaza kind of parking lot with connect, connected to Home Depot, et cetera, et cetera. And it was at, late at night at that point. And, uh, yeah, so we decided to do that. I had condoms. Uh, I had them just in case on me. I didn't think we would remotely get that far. Uh, I didn't think that was going to happen, but, um, it happened and it was great. Um, but yeah, so that was that first date. It was good. It was chill. And then on our way back, uh, like when I was going to drop her off, she was singing a little bit along to the music that she was playing. Like she was playing her Spotify playlist of EDM music. And whenever I hear people sing along to music or whatever, it is not good or it's just average or it's nothing special you know what i mean uh but this girl it was incredible so i i said something like wow do you know how to sing or this uh, yeah we got into that whole topic of music and i showed her some of my music she liked it uh um so it w it was neat so someday we're gonna make a song together um and i look forward to that but yeah she's a cool chill n neat girl so I only hung out with her one other time after, which was, and the reason why I haven't hung out with her much is because I've been distracted with a lot of different stuff that I've been doing, a lot of stuff I've been working on, hanging out with like close friends or whatever, you know, and dealing with other issues that happen to uh, hap uh, like occur. So I had to like try to figure out how to resolve it or whatever or get away from it. So 
And also considering like this girl lives 45 minutes or so away from me. So it's just like kind of a force. And also she can be uh, like a handful in the sense of like the mood changers are intense and stuff like that. So anyways, the next time we hung out was we were going to go to a farm uh, that she was going to see. So she bought two horses not too long ago. Uh, so she was going to rent uh, some space on a farm. So the guy who owns that farm will take care of the horses a little uh, for the most part. Uh, but she'll here and there come uh, help out, um, take care of her horses and then also his horses. So um, I thought this farm was going to be like a few towns or so away from her. No, it ended up being quite far. It ended up being like... 50 minute to an hour drive it was in new hampshire but a uh, part of new hampshire which is further away than i thought it would have been um so uh but this actually occurred about a day or two after i i cut off uh, a whole friend group and that's a whole other story uh and that's that was pretty intense stuff um but So it was nice that I was going on this whole random adventure with this girl. So we went to, so I picked her up and then we headed to that part of New Hampshire. Um, And first of all, something that was quite disgusting. I don't know if any of you have experienced this in the past, but she smelled like real, real stanky pussy. It was horrible. I didn't want to open, uh, like roll down the window because it would look suspicious and or offensive. And also because it would be like obvious, uh, be considering it's like kind of winter at that time. This was, uh, this was in February. Um, so it would just, it would just look weird or whatever. So yeah, we went to, um, we went to we went to go to New Hampshire and at the beginning it was horrible but I think she realized how she didn't smell good uh, at all um, and she was like oh is it okay if I open the window for a little and uh, I was like oh yeah that sure that's fine but I was thinking in my head thank God and so she did that for about like 15 minutes or so. Um, and then for the most part, it ended up being fine for the rest of the time, uh, slash I got adjusted, (laughs) um, but, uh, so it was a chill vibe. We went there, but on our way there, we saw a car on the other side of the highway towards the beginning when we arrived in New Hampshire. Uh, we saw a truck, I mean, on the other side, all the front of it, like the front half um was all like melted it was it it turns out i found out in the news uh later on that um it was a truck a trash truck that caught on fire and the guy the driver was thankfully able to safely exit the vehicle but it was intense because it was the most firefighters ambulances police etc that i've ever seen in a highway sort of situation. We saw the aftermath of it though, where it wasn't on fire, Um, but it was like melted a lot of it. So it was very, very, a very interesting sight. And at first, when we first saw it, we thought the guy was like dead in the front patch of the seat. Uh, But thankfully that wasn't the case. Uh, He's fine. Um, But anyways, that was a weird sight. So then we ended up, um, making it to a gas station uh, where I had to take a piss badly. Uh, And uh, yeah, she was just like telling me the story of like, that's where she would uh, stand outside with like a cardboard sign uh, and like beg for uh, money and whatever. Uh, That was one of her main spots uh, during one point in time where she was homeless. She was homeless in different areas, but that uh, was the time when she was homeless in New Hampshire. So, yeah, it was interesting hearing that story and perspective. Uh, we ended up um, 
making it to the farm in uh in new hampshire it was like the middle of nowhere in that part of new hampshire and this guy uh he's um he has lung cancer poor guy uh he looked like he was in his early 60s something like that maybe late 50s but i think more more likely early 60s he's originally from louisiana so he had that southern accent and uh he used to race horses he uh and this guy is quite notable within the horse racing industry like he knew some of the top race like horse racers or whatever and uh and all that it was it was interesting stories to hear so it, he, like we had a good conversation with him and like we got to see his neat horses that used to be race horses and like uh and they're worth a lot of money um and yeah so he said he's just like he's just been making money off of uh like renting out land like that um and and he's just been like living off that and past money he's made and is just uh gonna do it till he dies you know uh poor guy has lung cancer though um god bless him and so what happened was yeah we did that uh, and she got a good price because it's like, he's a nice, generous guy. Uh, and also because it's like in New Hampshire, things can cost cheaper because if she were to get it somewhere closer to her in Massachusetts, it would cost a lot. So she wanted the cheapest available price. So anyways, we ended up leaving eventually. We were there for a couple hours. Uh, and then what we headed to her house i was gonna drop her off but on the way there she decided to talk to a guy on speakerphone that's from wyoming i think he's originally from california from what i understood <clears throat> but he has like that middle of nowhere accent you know uh so yeah, it was an interesting experience what happened in regards to the phone call. He, uh, I think, is in his late 20s, something like that, um, and was talking about his whole experience in Wyoming on how stuff there is so cheap, the rent is so cheap, the gas, uh, how to get your license is a lot easier there than uh, like states such as Massachusetts or whatever. Uh, <coughs> job opportunities, uh, in Wyoming is best in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which is the capital of Wyoming, which is where he's at. Um, but he said that Denver, Colorado is literally only an hour away. And I did look that up after, uh, in that is true. Like every, I, I looked up, I did all the research after everything he was saying was true. Uh, so, like, Denver, Colorado obviously has a lot more opportunities. Uh, and an hour away is not bad at all. Uh, so, um, yeah, like, what this girl uh, with me was saying was, oh, yeah, come on, we need to do this. Like, come on, like, please uh, move with me over to Wyoming, blah, blah, blah. Because, like, the, the guy from Wyoming was saying, like, he would show us around he would uh he us he let us know all, all the ropes you know what i mean the ropes around uh the lifestyle like what to do and like show us around and like all that kind of stuff all that advice about all that and like rent there like for like an apartment that would cost here in massachusetts like 1200 which is like the cheapest you can get you know what i mean uh, over there, you can get that kind of apartment for like $400 a month. So that would mean if it was just her and I in one apartment, it would be $200 a month. But obviously the pay is going to be less over there compared to here. But he was saying that if you have a degree, even if it's an associate's degree over there, you're automatically a whole level up compared to the other people there. He was saying how... If you're coming from the West Coast or the East Coast, you have a lot higher chances in getting jobs and, and everything uh, because you're automatically a lot more fast-paced 
than those people there in Wyoming and those in some of those surrounding states, you know, uh, which when I was thinking about it, it's true. And then also, uh, so this girl, uh, with me, she, uh, has an associate's, I have a bachelor's, uh, degree and yeah, so uh, just in those scenarios and also considering we're from, uh, the East coast, uh, it's all real good benefits. Right. Um, and so at first when she said it, like that first immediate moment, like, oh yeah, we should move. We should go there, blah, 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 just to see how it is, blah, blah, blah. I was thinking it was ridiculous <laughs> in a lot of ways. Like, uh, but then I was thinking to myself, that would actually be quite an interesting experience. It's only a, an hour away from Denver. Uh, it's, it's like, it would be like, I've never lived outside of Massachusetts. So I've traveled outside of country. I've traveled in different parts of the U.S., but I never lived outside of Massachusetts. So that would be a very unique, interesting experience. And I, I was saying to her, yeah, like we could even do that. And we could even try it for a few months, half a year or year, longer or whatever, just to see how it is. Like, when are we ever going to have this kind of life experience? And whenever you hear about young professionals or young people nowadays in the US, they typically move to like San Francisco, LA, New York City, uh, Miami, uh, um, Boston, uh, any sort of big stereotypical city, Seattle, uh, Portland, Oregon, you know what I mean? Just any sort of stereotypical situation. You don't hear about people moving to Wyoming, you know? Uh, and... So it would just be a very unique, interesting situation. Uh, but then over time, I started to think about it more and like think about, is it really worth it, blah, 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 this, that. And also considering this girl is quite, quite impulsive. This could be just all a whole impulsive kind of uh, decision making she's making and she won't follow through with it and or... Uh, she'll fall through with it, then suddenly want to do something else or maybe get angry at me uh, instantly when, we're, when we move there or whatever. You know what I mean? It, it just does not seem like a viable, stable situation at all. If it was with a person who was, no offense to her, remotely stable, then it would be more something to think about. But considering that, not really. Uh, and also at the moment, one of my jobs is... A stable good situation it's only part-time but I would like to keep it for quite a while considering uh, it got me into my field I'm into graph design video production and photography and I do all that kind of stuff within my job uh, and because I have my foot in the door and I graduated college not too too long ago I want to stick with this job for a while so then it sticks on my resume well and then also I did the research if there's any graph design, video production, or photography jobs in Cheyenne, Wyoming, or around there, there is literally only, or no, there's zero in graph design and video production. Uh, and I looked up social media too, zero. And then for photography, there were a few, like, there were like, I think 10, five to 15, something like that of freelance photography jobs. But it wasn't like one-time freelance, but it would be like uh, freelance uh, like every weekend, something like that. It just did not seem like a stable, good situation, though. But uh, Denver is only an hour away. I didn't really. I looked into that, and there are a decent amount of opportunities in graphic design and video production there. So that wouldn't be bad. Um, but then that then that made me think like I might as well move to Denver, so or, or some other part of Colorado instead of traveling literally an hour away. Uh, but then again, an hour isn't bad, and the rent and everything else in Wyoming is so cheap, uh, and it would be quite peaceful there. But overall, I just thought it was a thing. I'm just gonna brush off and just not bother doing that. Uh, Maybe if I happen to be a YouTuber or, well, meaning like if I happen to be some sort of successful online presence 
where I'm able to move kind of wherever I want, I would love to move there for a little while to see how it is. But another part that I realized that it wouldn't be a stable situation for the future to do that is when I drop when I was about to drop her off, I wanted a goodbye kiss. And she was like, and uh, yeah, she was like, oh, I'm not giving you a goodbye kiss unless you date me, like unless you're my boyfriend, like unless we become boyfriend and girlfriend right now. And I was like, I was like, I thought she was joking, but I probably shouldn't have assumed she was joking considering she has borderline personality disorder. And it turned out she was not joking. So I was like, oh, come on, give me a kiss. And she was like, no, only if you, you're my boyfriend now. Are you my boyfriend? And I was like, oh, no, like I'm not ready for a relationship, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we only know each other for a little. And then she's like, only if you're my boyfriend. Oh. And, uh, and yeah, so she ended up leaving uh, without a kiss. And it was an awkward goodbye because she expected I was going to become her boyfriend then and there. Uh, and I've dealt with crazy girls before where they would put me in a situation and like kind of forcibly, uh, or like checkmating me or, uh, uh, persuading me into getting in a relationship with them, even though I would know them literally for two weeks or less, uh, in person. So yeah, that was literally the only the second time of me ever knowing her in person so it was quite strange how she did that and then also later that night she was like I need to move out of my house I can't stand uh my like guardians or whatever uh and um do you have like three hundred dollars you can lend me I can pay you back tomorrow blah 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 uh she was going to impulsively go on a train from Worcester all the way to Denver, Colorado, I believe. And that the guy she was talking to earlier on the phone would pick her up from there. But then she ended up realizing and thought more clearly that she can't afford that and that she should do the plan she was going to do is save up money for the next few months or so and then maybe go do that plan of moving to Cheyenne. So she ended up uh, the next day taking a step back and doing that instead of impulsively moving over there. So now she's just been working these days, saving up or whatever, uh, and that's that. But that was a very interesting situation. And yeah, so I wanted to share you share that with you. This is some girl that used to be homeless uh, and has had an interesting life and continues to in regards to her impulsivity and everything. So she's cool. She's nice. Uh, Just a little too impulsive, you know. (laughs) But thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. Check out my other stories. I've had a lot of interesting stuff happen in my life. All right. Bye-bye.